Hey folks, it's Speedy Stevie video time again. The first sequence of this compilation is a speeded up version of the approach into London City Airport in a British Airways Airbus A318, which was specially modified to fly from London City to JFK in New York. A route it has now discontinued. At 1 minute 6 seconds there's a normal speed version of this approach with commentary by a senior British Airways captain. At 5 minutes 2.2 seconds there's the final video sequence which is a look around London City Airport itself, enjoy! Please watch this video right to the end, and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated and if you click the bell you'll get to know as soon as new videos are published, almost daily. Hi, I'm Captain Karen Atherton. I've been a commercial airline pilot for 26 years. I'm here to talk you through one of the most challenging approaches and landings which takes place in British Airways every day. The senior first officer joining me on the flight deck is Paul Wriggler. I am currently one of only 27 captains qualified to carry out this landing on the Airbus 318 at London City on our exclusive premium service to New York. From a pilot's perspective, this is one of the most interesting approaches anywhere in the world. As we commence the initial turn, passing the London Eye on the left, the runway is at 90 degrees to the right of us. London City is a unique airport in its location in the heart of a major capital, with its proximity to the Shard, the tallest building in the UK, which you can see out of the right-hand window, and also the small size of its runway. Only British Airways' most experienced Airbus pilots can apply to fly on the route. All pilots on this bespoke 318 service must pass a rigorous extra training programme of simulator and route flying before being accepted onto the fleet. Our 318s are unique because they have the long range and the steep approach capability. They are equipped with special navigation systems to operate in the North Atlantic Oceanic Control Area and over intercontinental ranges. They also have more powerful engines. In fact, the aircraft has a better power to weight ratio and acceleration than Concorde. The runway is directly in front of us, surrounded by water to the left of and above the O2 Arena. Our regular customers particularly enjoy this route to the airport as it affords a view which is unparalleled. As we start our descent with Canary Wharf below our right wing, it's easy to see one of the main challenges of operating into London City. The approach is steep, five and a half degrees compared to the more usual three degrees used at other airports. This allows us to minimise the noise footprint of the approach and operate safely around the built-up areas of the city. The aircraft itself is specially modified to allow it to fly this approach using spoilers on the wing to produce enough aerodynamic drag to maintain the approach speed. Taking manual control of the aircraft at 1,000 feet, the three clicks is the sound of the autopilot disengaging this is followed by the voice call out of standby, standby flare, which warned me to prepare for the landing manoeuvre. As we reach the end of our approach, you can also see that the runway is a little shorter than most, which requires pinpoint accuracy when landing. Placing the main wheels on the tarmac softly but firmly ensures the aircraft can be safely stopped on the 1350 metres of runway. The aircraft is equipped with powerful brakes and thrust reversers which mean we still only need little more than half the runway length to stop. We then carry out a U-turn on a runway that is significantly narrower than the one at Heathrow. The aircraft can achieve a complete 180 degree turn within its own body length. In August the service will complete 25 million miles since its inception a remarkable achievement in just over six years of operation with only two aircraft. This is the equivalent of 100 trips to the moon or circling the earth 1,000 times.
that's it for another Speedy Stevie video. Subscribe now.